Praise the Lord. Wonderful to be here again with another uh, Sunday uh, Zoom study. Um, I'm really excited to um, continue to talk to you in this series because, um, you know, the more I study these things, you know, uh, as, as, as Stan, Brother Stanley was singing, you know, the more I uh, look at you, the more I want to know you. The more I want to know you, the more I want to look at you, you know, kind of, you know. Now, God's Word, you know, the depths and the layers that is in God's Word and the revelation of His wisdom. Oh, Paul says in Romans uh, 11, he says, and who can fathom the, the, the riches of His, you know, knowledge and understanding. Amen. You know, in, in medical science, you know, we are looking at uh, fundamentals of healing. You know, uh, disease is a conundrum. Disease is, a, is an enigma in the medical science. Okay, that's why so much money is being pumped into research and uh, data analysis and, you know, population studies and whatnot. You know, uh, there is a subset of disease called autoimmune disease. Okay, um, I mean, now let, me, uh, let me educate you a little bit on medical uh, knowledge here. So all diseases, you know, um, uh, about... Um, all diseases, I would say all diseases, is disease because of some problem with the immune system. Okay, all diseases, um, diabetes and uh, heart disease and uh, um, you know all the brain diseases, all diseases because of immu immune issues, uh, problem in the immune system. Okay. Um, so because you know we don't know what, what causes diabetes. People don't know what caused diabetes. Why is the, the islet cell of Langerhans? There's a cell called a group of cells at the tail of the pancreas which secretes insulin. It's destroyed, it's, you know, destroyed by immune, immune cells. Our own immunity des destroys them. And there are many triggers. They say you know, it could be genetic, it could be viral. and you know, People really don't know. So, but they uh, try to uh, treat it with, you know, so that uh, health can be prolonged or longevity of uh, health uh, life can be given. Um, you know, there is a there, there is a group of disease called autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. You know, your own immunity begins to attack your own body. You know, if it attacks your intestines, you know, a flurry of uh, uh, manifestations can come. You know, Crohn's disease. I used to suffer from Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis and uh, many diseases. You know, if it if the immune attacks your lungs, then you have many autoimmune lung diseases. You know. Uh, SLE and uh, Jogren syndrome and you know what not you know if if the immune starts attacking your um, bones and ligaments and tissues you know you get many other um, uh, manifestations like juvenile arthritis and what not uh, anyway I don't want to go down that line and <laughs> uh, it's all too much of medical thing uh, what am I trying to say here um, why are these immunities attacking our own body that's nobody knows that what triggers uh, the immune system which is supposed to be part of the body protecting the body why is it attacking uh, our own body nobody knows um, you know that is a width, width of skin diseases you know, autoimmune skin diseases you know like psoriasis and what not you know so many of them you know um let let me go to the board you know last last week i mentioned this word but i didn't have time i said we will park it and then we'll come back to it and you know, i remember this image remember i wrote this word image i said we'll park this word aside we'll come back to it you see uh, we're going to look at this tree uh we, we're going to look at this whole picture again um so yeah um you see, um, okay, we'll, we'll come to that uh, word image. I'm trying to uh, uh, think in my head, you know, how to frame this presentation. Um, so there are, uh, okay, let me just rub this. Okay, let me rub this. So, so we'll place image there. Image. So God man man this Adam and Eve let's you know Adam and Eve Adam and Eve so God and man you know we draw and then there were two trees uh, 
Um, and then were then there were other trees. We'll we'll discard the other trees for now. You know, we want to focus on this. Okay. Now I said a truth last week, which has been an eye opener for some of you, and they wrote to me and they were really you know thanking me. Said, man was not created to worship God. Man was not created to serve God. Okay. But do we worship him? Absolutely. You know, do we serve him? Absolutely. Okay. With all our heart, with joy in our hearts, we serve him. With joy in our heart, for worship him. You see, when you say man was created to worship God, so that means you know we are trying. What we are trying to imply is you know there is a need in God that man is trying to satisfy. Okay, there is no need in God. See, if God creates anything out of need, then that need that thing that is created cannot be loved. That can only be used. Okay, you need to understand that if man if God creates anything out of a need. Then that thing that you create can only be used to, to satisfy that need that you have, but it can never be loved. Okay, you need to understand that. So if you remove, so how is God? How who is this God? So last week I touched on this. This this God is a, is one. Uh, Hero Israel, you know the Shema, the prayer of uh, uh, the Jewish people. Uh, you know the the Hero Israel, uh, the Lord thy God. The Lord is one. Okay, what what Moses was saying that one that word one uh, is the Hebrew word ekad, which means union. So what Moses was trying to say was, you know, it's not a numerical one. You know, it is a union of you know three persons. It's very funny because God um, um, Moses uses the word union, but John uses a different word. Okay, so this this is the Father. This is the Son. This is the Holy Spirit, and they are kind of in, you know, they are you know holding to each other, kind of you know just, and they are, they are kind of you know in that union. They are you know that triuneness of God. So uh, you know this is the Father. The Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Father. You know the Son is not the Holy Spirit. Yet if you if you see one, you see the others. It, this is an uh, enigma. This is uh, something that you can't uh, intellectually grasp and try to understand with our logical thinking. Okay, he uses the word "ekad." Um, I think you know the Hebrew word. You know, if I might have pronounced it wrong, but it means you know they are in union. That's what the word. Um, I think it's near Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four says that. But when John uses the word, you know, so here is Moses coming and telling Israel. Hey, O Israel, the Lord, the God, the God whom we worship, is one. He's in union. Okay, I don't know if they would have understood. Okay, oh, okay, okay, Lord, you know, He's one. So when we, when the monotheistic, you know, they say, you know, the uh, there are two kinds of religion: the monotheistic religion, the polytheistic religion. The polytheistic religion is uh, there are many gods, you know, millions of gods. We worship different things for different gods for different things. And there are three major uh, monotheistic religion in the world. You know, the Muslims, the Jewish, and the Christians. Okay, but the Christian monotheistic religion is different from the other two monotheistic uh, understanding. Okay, this is so vital. Why is this, why are you why are you so why is this so important? Because today I want to talk about love. Okay, love is the secret ingredient of healing. <laughs> love is that magic dust of healing. Love is that which actually makes faith works. Okay, Paul uh, Paul said in Galatians, you know, faith worketh through love. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, you know, if I have faith to move mountains but not have love, I am nothing. It is love that makes uh, anything uh, special or anything um, viable or anything uh, adorable or anything beautiful. It is love. That is why the Bible comes and says, you know, in 1 John 4, 8, I think it says, you know, God is love. Okay. But uh, so love is the secret ingredient of healing. You know, I just watched a testimony some time back. Uh, let me just throw this testimony. This lady who's about to die of a very severe, you know, uh, debilitating cancer. She is in the very last, uh, uh, you know, thread of her life. She is in the intensive care. Uh, she is uh, she's breathing has slowed down. She is on uh, continued oxygen support. The husband is uh, holding her hand and weeping. The children are you know, around her. At that juncture, the, the doctor said, you know, she might die in the next few hours. So the family is around 
at the junk at the juncture she say, she says in a testimony that her spirit went outside the body and suddenly she came alive and she could see the husband and see the children and then she could kind of hover around over her body and she could see the whole hospital and the doctors talking and the nurses talking she could see the nurses station and what they are discussing and all those things she's kind of caught up in this atmosphere and then she has an encounter with this bright light she says this bright light tells her that she is being loud and she ex she steps into the bright light i might you know miss all the small details of this testimony you know she gets encapsulated by this light and in that encapsulation she said i am experiencing liquid love i am i'm just bathed with love she says suddenly she is out of her body into this light she is bathed with love and uh, then she says she 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 sees herself coming back and then she's back in the body and the breathing starts improving, increasing. You know, the intensity or the depth of the breathing increases. And slowly she comes along. Six days later, she walks out of the hospital completely healed of, you know, cancer that was present all over her body. Completely healed. <laughs> she is uh, defied medical understanding. The doctors are baffled. And she can't explain uh, what else she saw, you know, in a, in a, in a, you know, in a verbatim. And um, she was... They were expecting her to die within the next few hours, and then she walks out of seven days after the in, out of the hospital, completely healed. It is that love, you know. Love is the secret ingredient of healing, actually. <laughs> you know. Today I want to talk about love because, um, again, um, I, I, again in one John four, uh, John says, you know, uh, the perfect love casts out fear. What is this perfect love? So I want to focus on love. And uh, I want to also uh, give you some medical understanding about how uh, the love begins to heal our, uh, our image that is inside us. So if you think about this God, this triune God, so we Christians are not talking about a monotheistic God who is sitting up in the throne and kind of in a, uh, as a single person, right? As a single person, He's, he, he actually abides in communion. He, he abides in that union. So within that union, there is a complete harmony and complete union. So last week I said, if you look into that triangle, midst of the triangle, you'll, you'll find kind of liquid love. My question is, how do they generate that love? Okay, I've been thinking on this whole week and, uh, you know, um, just have a, have a listen and think about this. How, do they, how does love get generated among them? Because if God is love, he is the origin of love. He's the origin of life. How, how does it get generated? I believe this is how it gets generated because the father is not demanding um, adoration from the other two. The father is giving adoration to the other two. The son is not demanding adoration from the other two. The son is, the son is uh, uh, giving. In other words, the son is submitting. See, all the three, uh, the father, the son and the Holy Spirit should be doing this out of their own will. It is not that they cannot do otherwise. It's not that, you know, they, you know, they can only love, they can only submit, not that they can, they cannot demand sub, uh, submission from the other person. They can, but they're choosing to willing to submit and adore the other. So the father is always exalting the son. The son is always exalting the father. The spirit is always exalting the son. And the son is always exalting the spirit. And vice versa, this is going on. So what happens is when they willfully submit to one another, right? Right in that submission, right in that harmony, right in that pure, you know, um, um, exhortation, honor for the other person, love is generated. Right in the midst, love is generated. And this love does not need anything from the external to satisfy. In other words, they are complete and content within themselves. Right there. This is so uncommon. See, the whole world, in the whole world, we don't know love. We don't know love. We want, we, our understanding of love is more of a uh, demanding, okay? Um, oh, I love you, but what can I get from you? Okay, that is not love at all. That is selfishness. So in the triunus of God, we see the other-centeredness, not self-centeredness. They, 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 they are not self-centered. They are other-centered. In, only in the, in the community of, of living persons who are focused on other-centered, love can be generated. Can you see why, why love can, uh, uh, wh how this, uh, this can play out in our families? All family, uh, all marital breakdown is because of self-centeredness. All breakdown of church is because of self-centeredness. 
All breakdown of uh, communities and clashes and harmony is because of self-centeredness. When self-centeredness moves to other-centeredness or the other person being honored more than yourself, what happens is, you know, the self is uh, lost and love is generated within it. If the husband submits to the wife and the wife submits to the other, perfect love will, will emerge from within them. You see, that's the way, that's the mechanism that generates love. This is the uh, origin of, this is how love originates in our heart. When I sit here and say, oh, my family, I'm the head of the family, they should all come and, you know, submit to me. In that family, love cannot be generated. See, if I sit, uh, if I sit in, the, in my family, I am the head of the family, therefore I'm going to serve them. The moment I put on that attitude, love begins to be formed within that family. You remember Jesus uh, took a towel and uh, you know, um, tied around his waist and started washing the feet. He said, if I whom you call the Lord wash your feet, you will, know, you will not understand this. He's turning our understanding upside down. The kingdom of God is turning the world system totally upside down. You know, in submission and humbling is what is love generated. You know, maybe, you know, this is a little rabbit trail track, you know, maybe you're watching with a lot of family disputes and, uh, you know, bitterness between husband and wife, you know, you know, I want healing, brother, get me healing, you know, maybe I'm ministering to you right now, <laughs> right now I'm speaking into your life, you know, you know, it is that self-centeredness is promoting that, you know, all divorce is caused by self-centeredness. You know, uh, demanding the other person to submit to you and whatever that is, you know, sexual perversion, financial, you know, uh, independency or financial, uh, um, you know, uh, c control and things like that. Okay, so in this perfect harmony, this is so important. I'm going to beat this drum for, for a while in this session. You know, maybe I'll have one more session and, you know, I want to talk about... Uh, Meditation. I want to talk about engaging with this uh, through meditation. Maybe that will that we will do as a last session in the series. Okay, because it's so important to we grasp this the, how love is generated in, within the triuneness. Okay, so when 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 God is holy, this kind of love is so uncommon. That is where holiness is generated. When God is holy, see our understanding of holiness. You know, is so pathetic. Okay, we understand we define holiness as something which is not. Okay, what is holiness? Oh, you should avoid sin. That is holiness. What is holiness? You should be separated. That is sanctification. But what is holiness? Nobody knows. The word holiness in Hebrew word means uncommon. You know, it's so unique, so unusual. Because this submission, imagine these three beings are so powerful in, in themselves, but they are submitting. Okay, it is not that they are powerless, you know, they have to, they are expecting from the father to provide power for them. The son is expecting the, uh, the spirit to uh, give power to him. No, it is not because of something that they are lacking that they are submitting. They are fully complete and yet they are submissive. It is in that submission and union, love is generated. And that is so unique and th that is, that is what we, we, we call it as holy. God is holy means you know, God is so uncommon and, and the word holy also derived from the Greek, um, from the Anglo-Saxon word, you know, halig. Halig means to be whole, to be wholesome. So they are so wholesome, they are so complete, there is no lack, that nothing is broken within them. This is so important in creation because they are not creating, they, 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 they don't come into creating something, expecting something from the creation. If there is love flowing in your heart, love doesn't demand, love only gives. Love only gives, love does not demand. That is the very core definition of love. You know, if you want to know, uh, the, the if you want to put more words into this definition, go read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Paul is trying to explain this love. You know, uh, it is, uh, you know, always enduring, always bearing, uh, never provoked, uh, never is not puffed up. Love can only give, love cannot demand. That is why I say, you know, when, when this love beings begin to create everything, they don't expect anything returned from them. They didn't create the angels to worship them. But the angels cannot stop worshipping them. The cherubs cannot stop worship, worshipping them. Because once they got engrossed, when they got caught up in this love, when they see the liquid love in the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, adoration starts flowing out. You know, you know, your heart begins to well up with, uh, with praise and worship. You know, the angels are constantly going around them. Holy, holy, holy. You know, so unique, so unique, so unique. This is something that we cannot capture with our head. You know, with our intellectual thinking. Imagine, suddenly, 
Suddenly this being, this God creates man in, in their image. Not for man to be, man, come on, now you worship me. If God had created man to worship him, that means there is a need in God. If God had created anything out of a need, that thing that, thing that you created cannot be loud. It can only be used. Write it down. This is so powerful. If you create anything out of need, you won't adore it. You will only use it. You don't try it, you know. Um, if you are a DIY guy, if you make a table, if you make a table out of need, you will only use the table. <laughs> if, you, if you do something out of a need, you will only use it, but you will never love it. But God never created anything out of a need. He created out of what? The the overflow of his love. It's the expression of love. That for you know, Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 1 that the whole creation is, 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 is just shouting out the glory of God. You know, because not, he's not expecting anything in return. Now what is happening? He's put that image inside, inside man. You know, um, the image of God is inside every man. This is where I, you know, I was talking about uh, autoimmune diseases. Imagine in the core of uh, in the core of man. Let's sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the man as a heart now. This is man, okay. Right inside the core of man, there is an image. God has put that image inside the core of man. Okay, now you know what is temptation. Do you know something about this is the this is the immutable law of temptation you will never get tempted okay by by uh, by anything unless you have a desire for it in other words um, you will not be tempted for something which for which you don't ha already have a desire in it you know you can go read James chapter 1 you know James talks about it desire is the breeding ground for temptation okay so so you know when Satan comes, um, um, when Satan comes and talks to Eve and eventually invariably to Adam as well through Eve, what happens is, you know, he's actually playing with the desire. What is the desire? What is the desire? Okay, hold that thought. Now let's go back to the tree of life. Why, what is the need for the tree of life? If God created this triune being out of love, poured out you know, um, uh, love, out of love created man, right? What is the need for the tree of life? I don't fully understand it. But more I think about it, the more I look into it, there is little, little, little nuggets I get out of that. Okay, man, God could have said, okay, you're in my image, so go rule over the earth, don't eat this tree of death, you know, tree of uh, good and evil. Okay, we're going to define life and death today a little bit more. Last week I said absence of life is what death, absence of light is darkness. Okay, today we're going to define death in a slightly different way. <laughs> You'll understand this. That's why I'm talking about love. So what is the need for the tree of life? I believe the tree of life, there is a need because he put the image inside man, his image. But does the man knows and fully comprehends that image? He doesn't. If he had fully comprehended that image, he would have functioned as God from day one. Okay, so man, so I believe this, okay. Um, God wanted man to grow into the likeness of him by his choice. Okay, man, that, that, that choice, the ability to choose has to be given back to man. And he has to choose to grow and live out of that image. Are you with me? In other words, Though he said, you provided the tree of life. He said, as you partake of that tree, you will get the awareness of who you are. In other words, this is the tree of I am. This is the tree of I am. So he partakes of the tree. He knows I am. I am holy. What? Just, just, just go flow with the imagination here. Okay. He, he, let's say there's a fruit hanging. He goes and eats that fruit. Okay, it's a tree of life. It's you know, he said it bears fruit. He, tree, he eats the tree of life. He said, I am whole. Then he, every time he puts on that identity, he begins to manifest that identity. Now, the last week I was saying this, you know, you cannot produce what you are not. You only produce who you are. 
okay so prosperity is an identity issue you know health is an identity issue everything in life is an identity issue you cannot produce in life what you are not can you with are you with me so god has given total control to man total you know choice to man he said now you go eat of this tree and as you eat of it a nature a attribute of god will be revealed to him it is not like it's not an intellectual grasp of knowledge okay it's not like going to a seminary ha ah, i understood the names of god today not like that it's an inner knowing as he is participating in eating this tree uh, in this in this fruit out of his own will power he is acquiring an attribute of god okay that puff look at this that whatever is gaining will perfectly match with that image god has put inside him are you with me this image this image in the heart of man is in perfect harmony with god's image but man does not know it fully man man does not know it fully for him to grasp or know grow in the knowledge of that grow in the experience of that what is happening is he has to partake by his choice from this tree so he discovers i am holy i am pure i am strong i am healthy you know i can walk on water you know this i am you know i am you know all the i ams of jesus quoted in the um, in uh, in john in the john's gospel and things like that so this is this is a positive mechanism this generates life within man and the other fruits you know the other last week i said he ate other, other fruits for physiological need hunger and things like that so man shall not live by bread alone the other fruit other trees but also from the uh, from the word word of god that's how man was created that's a design of man okay by choice man has to choose the word which is which which imparts identity and that identity he sees himself he, he embraces itself it, it, that and then he begins to live it out that's the normal way now what happened was this happens through the process of imagination okay that's why i want to talk about meditation and imagination okay because if you think about it everything goes inside your heart through the faculty of imagination without imagination um a picture cannot be formed inside your heart okay this is um, this is the normal physiological or a, a mental phenomena god created man to be you know if you read uh, genesis chapter 6 and uh, later on genesis uh, 11 and things like that you know man, god said you know oh man's imagination has been corrupted then in uh, when the noah's children comes out you know god says oh man i will no longer you know uh, flood the earth again with uh, waters uh, even though man's imagination is continually evil from his youth youth days so it is through the imagination your identity is established within you or your identity is you know imprinted or imparted within you that's a normal physiological phenomena satan knows that so what does he do he comes and plays with the imagination of eve see they already see ask yourself this question if inherently they have a desire to become like god that is the cry of that image that image is an innate stimulant within them to become like god if they don't have the desire to become like god satan's temptation would not have worked you see you can never be tempted by something for which you don't have a desire see i don't get tempted with alcohol because i don't have a desire for alcohol okay uh, but other people have you know been addicted to alcohol and they have come out of it when they go through the you know supermarket where the aisle in alcohol they, they they might avoid it because you know alcohol might tempt them because of the past experience which is very well and good i am not you know i'm not uh, condemning them but i get tempted by other things okay so a temptation cannot happen without a desire so innately adam and eve has a desire to become like god is that wrong no god put inside them <laughs> God put that inside them. Do you know what? He has not never removed that. That is why we see so many corruptions and cults and uh, uh, chaos in the world. You know, men coming and saying, "I am God." You know, I am this God. You know, they they have come, created so many men will come along uh, uh, in history also. It's, uh, right now, there are there are thousands are existing. You know, the Godmen's or uh, religious people they decorate themselves. You know, put different costumes and sit in a chair and you know, that's an innate desire. God put it inside. It's not that you know Satan put it inside. No, God puts the, it, that desire. But he he created a a mechanism to achieve that. Do you know what God is doing? <laughs> 
again, it's, uh, you call it as andiology, you know, <laughs> my take. God is inviting him into the Trinity. God is inviting man or he is inviting, he is asking man to invite them into him, into him. God is inviting man into the triuneness of God. That's where fellowship is happening. You know, go read 1 Corinthians 1, 9. That scripture reads like this. God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. Hey? So God wants man to fully functional as God, you know, like, um, you know, carry the image and experience the, the joy and the peace that they are experiencing. But there is a mechanism for that. Eating from the tree of the uh, life that produces life and, you know, produces that awareness. And when, see, this is, this is what, again, again, I, I'm thinking, I'm still thinking, you know, why this tree? So when he eats from this tree, his a revelation comes to him. Now, that revelation will not make him like God. <laughs> that revelation, he has to now use the faculty of imagination to imp to grow in that revelation in his heart. So when that information becomes revelation and through imagination it becomes that image, that image will sink with that image that's already inside him. He will experience God more in his heart. Are you with me? Am I, it's too complicated. Is it too complicated? Let me, let me say it again slowly. Man's, there is an image, right in the core of man, there is an image that's exactly like this God, okay? And that image seeks to be in fellowship with that God. But that fellowship is going to happen through the identity that he's going to know through eating from the tree of life. So when, when he knows, when he eats from the tree of life, there is an information unpacked within him. When he uses the imagination to take that uh, image and put it inside his heart, guess what will happen? That image will superimpose and sync and perfectly harmonize with the image that is already inside him. When doing that, he begins to experience God's love abundantly in his heart. That is the process. Then, there's another strange, uh, let's not go to the tree of life as of yet. Okay, we need to go to the tree of, um, uh, tree, sorry, tree of death, you know, because we, we, we will show you what is happening here. The root of diseases, I'm talking about where disease comes from. You know, then there is something that it makes me little wonder. Why does Eve, why, there is no need for Eve. If man carries the image of God and he is now got an option, go eat this tree of life, you will, uh, you will get to know more of God and that you will experience God. Voila! Stop! Everything is done. But the Bible says man was alone. It, it doesn't say man was lonely. Man was alone. So, what does that mean? Pfft, again, you know, I'm growing in this revelation. What I think is this. Because for love to be love, for love to be love, it is not only what you're experiencing inside, but it's also you're giving out to somebody else. In other words, as man, he, though he's got the image inside, now he's discovered that image through the eating of the tree of life, but he needs to find someone to, to share that love. Because he is in a body, where they are in a spirit. Are you with me? When you have a body, you have a senses. So through the senses, he has to give that love to somebody. So man is allowed. Though he's experiencing God's love in his heart, I feel this is what I believe. So man is still unable to give it back to a similar uh, creation. He, so God brings animals to them. Uh, there is a mismatch. That love is not flowing into the animal. It is flowing, but it is not flowing in the intensity. So God realizes uh, there needs to be another one, you know, that we need to bring something from within Adam and, you know, he will see that face to face. See, guess what? This triune being, you know, in, one, in John's gospel, it says, uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. That word with actually in the Greek means face to face. So they are not like three pe people, you know, um, having a good time. You know, they are not like three people, you know, s sitting in a room doing their own thing. It is like three people actually facing each other, facing each other. Are you with me? In that they are experiencing joy and peace and harmony and love, you know, in, in, in looking at the other person. So probably when Adam looked at an animal, he could not see 
that love is not flowing. He is experiencing, he is receiving that love of God inside his heart. So God says, let's create a woman. And when the woman comes into the scene, guess what? Wait, go back to what I said. For love to generate, you know, the, the, per, the other person needs to submit to this person. This person needs to submit to the other person. Only their love is generated. When that love is experienced in Adam's heart, what does it do? He will submit to Eve and Eve will submit to Adam. Adam won't rule over Eve and Eve won't rule over Adam. That is, uh, you know, carnal and corrupted love. Do you see how it works now? See, when Adam is submitting to Eve and he is submitting to God, that love that they are experiencing from triune God, now they are able to share it with each other. Now guess what they have in between them? Love. Pure, liquid, unadulterated, awesome love. Do you see? So, you know, if they are in love like that, guess what? Guess what? Mm. Guess what, you know? There will not be. There will be perfect harmony. There will be glory of God filling all over the earth. And Satan doesn't want that. So what does he do? He comes. They have an inherent desire to become like God or experience God more in their hearts. He taps into that desire. He gives. He says, okay, there is a route here. Okay, before they went to that route, he projects an alternate route. He said, hey, you know, if you eat this tree, you will become like God. They already have the desire. They eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Guess what? As soon as they ate, you know, as soon as they ate, you know, uh, they felt ashamed. You know, what happened was, so what is this tree providing you? <laughs> so this tree provides I am. What does this tree provide you? This tree also provides I am. Right? But here is the difference. This tree provides I am that will match with the image that is already inside God. This tree will also provide with I am. I am rich because I have money in the bank. I am healthy because doctor's report is healthy. This I am is based on what? Sensual knowledge. I am fine because, oh, I have all insurance policies. I am covered. So, oh, I am good because, you know, I have retirement policy. Oh, oh. Can you see? This I am also gives you satisfaction, but based on what? Sensual. But God's image is not based on sensual. God's image is based on a spirit. So what happens? Now watch this, guys. You create an image. You build an image. Again, through the process of imagination. See, imagination is the track through which thoughts enter into heart and become a reality. Now, man is now eating from this tree. Suddenly, he found himself naked. Oh, he, he, you know, he, he, he is acquiring an identity. He can't stop it now. Oh, uh, uh, there is no money in the bank. Palpitation. Oh, money is the bank. Praise God, I am happy. Can you see? He, he can only live by what he sees in sen sensuality. Sensuality also creates an I am. I am rich because I have. I am educated because I have this. I have. Uh, I am this. I know. Suddenly, the sensual things becomes this identity. Suddenly, layers and layers and layers of fig leaves are coming. Here he was naked. That means God alone is his identity. Here he is caught now. Ah, I need to have a seven bedroom house. Ah, now I feel good about myself. Oh, I need to have this. The more he's trying to live like that, the more something is happening internally. What is happening? He creates an image. He creates an image and he superimposes that image over this image and it doesn't match. Oh, Karabasha Torianda. Oh, every time we are creating an image based on what we see and we try to superimpose with the image that is already God put inside Adam, which is inside every human being, it doesn't match. What will happen if you try to fit something that doesn't fit? Internal chaos, internal, internal breakdown of harmony. Right there is the root cause of autoimmune disease. Your own immunity is going confused now. It tries to kill that image. <laughs> Can you see? I, that's why, you know, all the diseases, all the cancer, everything is caused by immune problem. Every disease is caused by immune problem. Right? You know, simple infection to complicated, you know, strange diseases. Because we are continuously superimposing an image that is inside us with an image that is 
formed by senses. Oh, this is a great mystery, brothers and sisters. I am so super excited. Go to Colossians chapter 1. I want to show you this because this baffled me. Oh, one mystery unlocked for me. He says, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Watch this. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Among the Gentiles. Do you know this image God put inside man is present in every human being. Not only Christians, not only Jews, in every human being. Watch this again. To them God will, who the prophets. So this mystery that was hidden, what is that mystery? Christ in you, the hope of glory is hidden in every human being, but they do not know. So what happens is Christ in you, the hope of glory, Christ in you image is hidden deep within you. But you are trying to impose an image on top of that based on sensual. Based on your education, based on your upbringing, based on your caste, your creed, your skin color, your, your national birth, and your based on riches, and based on poverty. That image doesn't match on that image. What happens? You create internal chaos. This internal chaos eventually breaks down your immunity, which will begin to manifest as diseases. Eventually, it will begin to, you know, oh man, time is running. I'm just beginning to start here. This I don't. Th <laughs> this this uh, series is going to go for a long uh, for long. I think. Go go later on. Get on after you get off the session. Go and look up this word. Okay. Apoptosis. When I studied this word for the first time in histo in pathology in third year of medical school. You know, in the Robbins textbook of pathology, I looked at this word. Fascinating word. Apoptosis. That word means programmed cell death. Programmed cell death. That means, this, nobody knows. You know, actually death is a mystery in the medical world. Nobody knows why death happens. Okay? Nobody knows. You know, if you take one cell, one cell, right? Uh, animal cell. Animals, uh, the our cell is so amazing. It's like a factory. It's continuously buzzing and working, continuously moving. You know, um, you know, a cell and information comes through as, as proteins and there is receptors on top. It's getting internalized. It goes into, uh, um, you know, there's a nuclear. There are many other things, you know, Golgi bodies, endo endoplasmic reticulum and mitochondria. They are floating. The, inf the information that comes from the outside goes internalized, goes into the nucleus. There is DNA, RNA, then protein is synthesized, protein is secreted out. Cell is like a continuous factory. Suddenly at the age of 80, the cell shuts itself down. Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows why a cell which has been beautifully functioning, you know, wonderfully functioning, suddenly shuts itself down. And they coined the term apoptosis means programmed cell death. But who programmed it? <laughs> programmed cell death. Nobody knows. You can go up and do some research on that. You know, uh, science world again tries to explain it. You know, oh, this is could be an genetic, environmental food, and all those things. I'll tell you what. It's here, brothers and sisters. You are continuously imposing an image that is contrary to the image that God has put inside you. Paul picks it up in Colossians 1.27. He says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ is the confident expectation of the manifestation of the glory of God that is already inside every human being. Not just Christians. He said, he used the word Gentiles. He knows who is a Jew, who is a Gentile. Anybody who is born again is a Jew. Anybody who is not uh, circumcised in his heart is a Gentile, according to Paul. You go read uh, Romans chapter 2 and uh, all the way to chapter 9. He that is circumcised on the external is not a Jew. But he that is born of the Spirit is a Jew. So when Paul says Gentile, he talks about everyone who is not born again. And he says that is the great mystery hidden in the Old Testament that the, that the image of Christ is hidden in the Gentiles. Oh, when I saw this, my heart began to flutter. I said, this is the origin of diseases. Can you see this image that we are generating through sensuality doesn't make us experience God's love. It makes us more selfish. Hey, instead of me submitting to my wife, now I demand my wife serve me. 
I, the de- wife goes on to say, no, 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 I am also educated. I come from a rich family. I've got, you know, all these things. You, you know, you, I'm equal with you. Or you submit to me. Boom. Instead of submission, there is hatred, selfishness. Love is not generated. So what is happening? Your body is created to bathe in love. Can you see how the, how the um, distortion, how the uh, misfit of the two images creates internal chaos? You can't experience love anymore. Now what do you do? You, you seek pleasure. You know, in, in your corrupted thinking, okay, drugs gives me. So you begin to go after drugs, women. Oh, I want pleasure. See, God's love when you experience inside you, when you experience God's love, there is a secretion of um, endorphins that, that makes your whole body experience pleasure physiologically. Endorphins or, in, uh, or morphines, uh, morphine, uh, and indigenous morphines are present all over the body. You know, morphine, uh, like the drugs, you know, heroin. Heroin is uh, mo- morphine. Heroin is a different structure of morphine. It's called diacylated morphine. Okay. So, uh, they, they want uh, morphine. <laughs> Take a morphine. Ah, oh, they feel so. That's what Paul, uh, uh, David wrote, you know, in your right hand there are pleasures evermore. So when you are experienced, when you are actually in the presence of God, what happens is you not only experience him in the spirit, you experience him in spirit, soul and body. Your body is part of this equation. Your body is not something that to be hatred. Oh, our body, throw the body, we'll get a new body. This body. I'm not talking about the glorified body. This body, this is how man was created to live. Can you see how when there is a mismatch of image, your whole system breaks within you, breaks down within you. The food that you're eating is no longer getting digested. Now you're researching so many research. Oh, which is the nutritious food, organic food, farm fed chicken, um, that this and you're you're so caught up in fear. Hey, if you're afraid of food, you know, go and read Romans chapter 14, very slowly, carefully, carefully read it, slowly. Talks, the whole chapter is about food. You know what? You want to know what is the most nutritious food for you? The food that is eaten with joy in your heart, with faith. That is the most nutritious food. Right? You can avoid this egg, that egg, you know, cholesterol, all those things. Carnal men creates all sorts of nonsense. The whole Christian world is running after carnal knowledge. So brothers and sisters, don't get, fa- don't fall for all this worldly wisdom. Hey, you know, you have to grow. You have to grow in wisdom. Hey, till then, just eat whatever, you know. Don't eat with fear. Uh, Brother Andrew, what you're saying is baffles my mind. I can't throw away, you know, I need to grow in this. Fine, just, but understand this, that world's wisdom is not God's wisdom. Whatever you eat with joy in your heart will not kill your body. Whatever you eat with peace and faith in your heart, it will not kill your body. Why? Because life comes from the image of God inside you. And any, and any time you go and identify yourself from the word of God, when you seek your identity in the word of God, you match that image with that image. Guess what? Internal chaos gets to become harmony. Internal disorder begins to suddenly comes into order. Internal disruption, internal distortion begins to suddenly harmonize within you. Can you see? Suddenly, your body goes into hibernation. Your metabolic rates goes down. Your sympathetic drive goes down. Your parasympathetic drive goes up. Your heart rate comes down. Your blood supply goes all over your intestines casually because you're in a state of what? Rest! <laughs> this is what Hebrews talks about. You know? God is inviting them into his rest. This is what it means. That means I take on the image of God. And work on it, work on it, work on it, work on it. See, this is not an intellectual grasp, brothers and sisters, which is what I'm going to talk about it next week. You know, what do we do with when we find the identity of God in, in the word of God? Yeah, I memorized it. Nice. I have won a lot of quiz. I've got degrees. Divin- I've got uh, theological degrees. Wonderful. Useless. <laughs> we got to take it down. You know, not from the conscious level. You got to take it down to the subconscious, into the heart level. Next week, uh, we, we will talk about it. Can you, can you see how the whole thing plays out now? See, Satan comes and understands, I need to get into the imagination of man. There is a desire in man to become like God. So I'm going to come and give him some information. 
I'm going to fill in some information. I'm going to give him some information and then I'm going to walk away. That information is going to play within the imagination of Eve. And suddenly now with that imagination, she looks at the fruit. Suddenly the fruit becomes appealing. Ah, it is pleasing to my eyes. If I eat, I will become like God. Boom, she cannot stop it now. See, once that which goes into your imagination, you cannot stop it from manifesting. See, many people fight with me on health, okay? I, you know, I'm already getting um, bad names, you know. I, I'm almost, every day, you know, I'm slowly, people are, you know, waking up and saying, this guy is heretic, <laughs> okay? I'm fine with that, you know, that's fine. You know why? You know, they, you know, the imagination is so corrupted. What I'm offering is so unbelievably unbelievable. It is so stupid. It goes against every knowledge that man has built. The darkness is built. Okay, what happens is when you superimpose that image that comes from this onto the image which God has already put inside you, distortion, what is happening? You're programming the cell to die. Are you with me? Programming the cell to die. The more information you gather, the shorter your lifespan becomes. Adam was 900 years, Methuselah was 975 years, and Noah was around some 800, 900 years. The more become God, man became knowledgeable, his lifespan wing starts coming down. Why? The more he finds, oh, that's what I need to have to have a better life. Boom! He simply, he simply puts an image onto the image which, is called, which, which doesn't mismatch. More heart disease is growing, more cancers are growing in the 21st century. Hey, you don't have to believe me, just Google up. Fine. Information is available. The more information, we found the uh, uh, method for longevity of life. Wonderful. You just reduced your life. <laughs> Can you see the wisdom of God is so counter uh, to the world's wisdom? Hey, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. So what's happening is, you know, so what is death? See, when you get an image from here, the image that comes inside from here, that superimposes on the image that is inside you, what happens is, you know, you're experiencing love. So life plus love is what? Eternal life. Life, I'm living, but I'm experiencing love. That is what? Health, happiness, joy, prosperity. I get an image from here, Put it on this image, on uh, superimpose on this image, doesn't match. What am I experiencing? I am not experiencing love. So a life without love is what? Death. Can you see? A life without love is what? Death. Everything that is comes of love, everything that you see in this world that is done out of selfless love comes from God. Mahatma Gandhi's, Mother Teresa's love, Mahatma Gandhi's love for Nelson Mandela's self-sacrificing, that comes from God. Every self-sacrificing love, you can trace it back to God. Every selfish act, you can trace it back to the voice of the devil. So there is a voice behind this tree. There is a voice behind this tree. There is a voice that is constantly speaking to us through the news media. There is a voice behind data analysis. There is a voice behind that you see and touch and feel. In, for you are seeking identity in that. There is a voice telling you, if you have this, you will become like God. If you have this, you will have longevity of life. And guess what? We keep on taking eating that, uh, you know, that, that we, 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 that voice plays into the imagination and then you can't stop it. Once it goes into your imagination, once you've conceived the, uh, the picture, you will only manifest it. it it'll, the, the, the heart is like a womb. Imagination is the, the process by which you impregnate. Once the womb is impregnated, you know, delivery is just a, uh, is a matter of time. Delivery is a matter of time. Okay, you cannot abort it. <laughs> okay, you, you know, it's, impo it's almost impossible. You got to do, go and take that image and put a new image. That's really, really tough. You know what Satan was trying to do to Jesus? Jesus, Jesus. Hey, do this, you'll become like God. Do this to prove like this, this. You know, Jesus had a desire. 
to become like God. He knows inside. He is God. He is continuously coming to satisfy the desire through sensual knowledge. Jesus would not buy into it. He said, it is written. The word is already written in my heart. I have seen it inside my heart. I, that is enough for me. I don't, another, I don't need another proof. See with me? See how he, he, he protected himself in God's reality? In other words, Satan was lying to Jesus. Satan is constantly lying to us. So what is death? Death is a lie that we have believed that help, that makes us not to experience this love. So every image that we create based on these lies mismatches with the image of God that is already inside us, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Guess what happens? You simply die every day. Die every day. Hey, brothers and sisters, you know, Christianity is not about going to heaven. You know, if you don't understand these things, you know, you will just, you know, shut down the shop and say, okay, when Christ comes, I will go, you know, I'll keep myself holy, 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 read the Bible, confess all my sins, you know, live in the closet. Okay, I'll give tracks here, tracks there, be in a ministry team, prayer team. Okay, I've done ministry, tick, uh, I, I prayed, tick, I've lived holy, tick, I've confessed all my sins, tick, Christ will come anytime. Hey, that is not Christianity. Christianity is experiencing the Father. Experiencing the Father. Time is up, you know. Man lost the ability to see this image. God says, okay, okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to become one of them and show in my body how that image looks like. So comes Jesus. Comes Jesus. And uh, he begins to reveal the Father so that for the first time he sees when the match when the two images matches inside a man. Oh my goodness, he's walking on water. He's multiplying bread. He's loving the prostitutes. He is not tempted by the prostitute. He's not allured by, you know, hey, he was, he is a, he is a man with, with similar physiology like this. He was hungry. He's, he came in a male body. So he probably had early morning erections. He already has sexual drives, sexual desires. But everything he submits to the father to provide for him. He seeks the Father to satisfy all his needs. Are you with me? In other words, he is only reinforcing this internal identity with the word of God. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? In Jesus, we see the manifestation of God. A man who is one with God. Which is what God created Adam to be, to become one with him. Through the process of eating from the tree of life. So, brothers and sisters, you know, time is up. I really wanted to go and show something more here about what is new birth. Um, yeah, I mean, um, maybe next week or maybe I'll have to do a separate session. I'm going to do all this as a separate session, um, you know, hitting it again, you know, with some powerful truths which I've been learning. So, amen. So, brothers and sisters, you know, always conclude with a little exercise. Just, you know, go think about this, you know. Rejoice because that image is already inside you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is why I always say, you know, you cannot find scripture, you cannot find Christ in the scriptures. See, the, the Christ that you find in the scriptures is a, a, a theoretical Christ. But through the scriptures, if you find the Christ inside you, he's a living Christ. Are you with me? You know, find the living Christ inside you. Oh, but we, we look at the doctor's report. We meditate on it. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Oh, the uh, pain confirms me. Biopsy test confirms it. Blood test confirms it. The, the, the professor emeritus, professor, most PhD, uh, the most uh, eminent doctor confirms it. I am dying. What have you done? We have programmed ourselves to die. But if we take God's word and say, this is already inside me. You see, one of the biggest lies Satan has done, you know what? He put God up there. One day you will go there. So better you die, you go there. <laughs> but Christ came to reveal Christ inside you, God inside you. The triuneness of God is inside you actually. I will show you. <laughs> because Jesus was trying to say this in John chapter 14. He says, when me and my father, on that day you will know. In John chapter 14, you read it. He says, on that day you will know, I in you, you and me. 
we are one and then he goes on to say when you abide by my by my word me and my father will come and make our home with you when the spirit comes he dwells inside you he will never leave you forever he will abide in you he said jesus said in john chapter 14 uh, john chapter 16 read that so what is what is happening is you know we put god up there so we are here trying to be good and climb the ladder to reach god but in christ you know when christ comes the father comes the tri- the spirit comes see the triuneness of god cannot be separated when 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 one is there the other two are there when the father is there the son is there the spirit is there when the son is there the father is there the spirit is there when the spirit is there the father is there the son is there read one john you will see the whole this pattern occurring over and over and over and again in every chapter in the epistle of john okay so what happens is you know you know find god inside you rejoice that image is already inside you rejoice that christ is in you rejoice the father son the holy spirit dwelleth inside you god abideth in us john said he who believe that jesus is the christ god abides in you 1 john chapter 5 so when god abides in you it's a matter of discovery now i open the scriptures open the word go to the tree of life find my identity see push it into my imagination begin to see my life in that image we will talk about that we will break that down next week the process okay tonight go to the scripture what do you see in psalm 23 what do you see, see in psalm 91 what do you see in psalm 1, 128 what do you see in psalm 121 what do you see in proverbs 4 what do you see in proverbs 10 12 whatever what do you see in colossians chapter 3 what do you see in ephesians chapter 1 can you see the whole tree of life is in front of you laid open right lay, laid open guess what we are where we run we run to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil please can you tell me is everything okay no 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 we need to blood take a blood test and prove that you are fine oh okay 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 Good. tree of life you wait oh is everything normal ha oh, everything is normal that normal image that you create now doesn't match with this image here <laughs> because that image is based on sensual knowledge <laughs> paul said in romans chapter 8 to be carnally minded to be filled with a mind based on sensual knowledge is death to be spiritually minded to be minded with an image that is based on who you are according to the word according to jesus is life and peace romans chapter 8 verse 2 or 3 i think oh wait, verse 7 or 8 i think so brothers and sisters what do you see in the scriptures do you see you do you see you Do you see your wife, your family, your children? Do you see? We will talk more on that. Find the image that is already inside you. This is a treasure hunt, treasure hunt for life. To that degree, you find that image. To that degree, you will begin to manifest it in your life. See, you know, death is an alien concept for Christian. Christian need not die without you know. Christian keeps living. He never dies actually. you know he simply finishes his assignment in this body and moves on he lays down his body he keeps living <laughs> you know but the other person oh brother andrew died brother andrew never died he cannot die <laughs> he simply walks out of this body on assignment i will they will put my body in the coffin and bury it ah oh, he died no he never died he just walked out he's finished his assignment you know you know you know we are so worried about death you know why because of the image that we have been developing from this tree brothers you know i've given enough enough information to you you know to go think about it listen to it again you know you know and let the holy spirit open your understanding amen search the scriptures proverbs chapter 2 said if you search like like a hidden treasure like silver with all your heart then he said you will find the knowledge of god proverbs chapter 2 you know he says like a hidden treasure hidden treasure where is the treasure hidden it is hidden inside you not in the theological scriptures not in the theological textbook the treasure is hidden inside you the scripture is given as a uh, as a road map to find the treasure inside you oh i want to continue amen father i thank you for this time lord i thank you because your presence is so intense in our in us lord christ in us the hope of glory Lord I bless each and every brothers and sisters even 
at the hearing of this revelation the truth father their body is infused with life and a, and and a layer of sickness is kicked out of that body in jesus name thank you lord cancers have disappeared lord blood pressure diabetes have disappeared lord i thank you because mental illness alzheimer's whatever dementia lord i thank you because you brings restoration of peace joy and harmony within us father Lord, let them experience this life more and more as they dig out, as they dig into the word of God and find who they are in you, in them, in them, within them, Lord. Not in the, just in the pages of the scriptures, Lord. I bless each and every one. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.